Hello, Mother Factors. I'm Sam, and today I'm here to talk to you about the most important thing in life. No, not love, not happiness, money. They say that money makes the world go round, but I'm reaching out to a higher ground, and that money is the root of all evil, from which we've reached the inevitable conclusion that the rotation of the Earth is powered by some kind of evil money-powered jet engine. <laughs> hey, don't shoot the messenger. But regardless, which country is closest to being completely cash-free? Who use spades as money? And why am I so poor, even though I spend only half my income on Jennifer Lawrence merchandise? Two out of three of those questions are going to be answered. So pull out your wallets, max out your credit cards, and donate all your money to us so we can afford to pay Clive. And also prepare yourself for 101 facts about money. Number one. Okay, first things first, what is money? Well, according to the European Central Bank, money, or stone-cold cheddar as I call it, has three different functions. It's a medium of exchange, something you can pay for things with, a unit of account, a way to price goods and services, and a store of value, a method of storing your wealth. Number two. However, according to the economics glossary, most economists find that the last two properties, money being a unit of account and store of value, are non-essential properties. That arise as a result of money being a medium of exchange. Ooh, fight between a glossary and a bank. Fight, fight, fight. Number three. The development of money as a means of exchange happened because prior to that, the only way to obtain goods and services one might need would be to barter, i.e. to trade goods and services for other goods and services. So it was basically a, if you scratch my back, I'll mow your lawn situation, although a little bit less sexual than that sounds. Number four. Cattle, which includes sheep, camels, and other livestock, was the first and oldest form of money. Each animal was referred to as a caput, which is the Latin word for head. This is where we get the word capital from, which is still used today when talking about money. Number five. The problem with this system is that it requires you to find people who have exactly what you want, but who also need exactly what you have. For example, if you're in desperate need of a skateboard, but only have novelty t-shirts to offer, you need to find someone willing to part with their sick deck in exchange for whimsical Doctor Who garments. Good luck with that one. Number six. Additionally, even if you can find such a person, your radical trade partner may not agree that his entire skateboard is worth only four t-shirts depicting this furious red-headed woman, and is instead demanding the princely sum of eight t-shirts depicting this furious red-headed woman. You don't have eight t-shirts depicting this furious red-headed woman, you only have four. If only there was an agreed upon method of symbolizing value that's transferable. What could that be? Number seven. And so the concept of money was born. Well, sort of. First came commodity money, which is a type of good that functions as a currency. Usually something basic, like salt, tea, a Kardashian, or even shells. However, different groups of people around the world have historically used all manner of different things as money, including, but not limited to, blankets, belts, fish, peppercorns, blood, beads, bat feces, and even huge stones. What's the exchange rate of blood to bat feces, do you think? Number eight. Yes, that's right, some people just used enormous stones as money. The Yap Islanders of the Pacific used massive donut-shaped stones as their currency, with some of these measuring as large as 12 feet across. Number 9. Cowries are a diverse group of sea snails with durable and colourful shells. Pretty, aren't they? Yes, don't worry, I haven't just dropped LSD, this is relevant. They were a popular option for use as money with many civilizations around the world. In fact, the cowrie shell was the longest and most widely used form of currency in human history. Number 10. As mentioned, many people used salt as a form of currency, and was so common that it left an interesting legacy. The word salary, meaning the amount of Benjamins that slithered their way into your bank account every year, comes from sal, which is the Latin word for salt. Number 11. Unfortunately, there are a number of problems with commodity money, the first of which being that it can be used like a good. If you're using salt as currency, for example, using some of your salt as food immediately and directly results in you having less money, and it's actually incredibly unhealthy. Additionally, forms of commodity money often aren't durable or easy to store. Many foodstuffs are perishable, and bags of salt take up a lot of space and can easily be destroyed. Number 12. Some of the earliest forms of Chinese coinage were large pieces of metal shaped like knives or spades. Ouch, imagine having them in your pocket. That's an accident waiting to happen in your old jennies. Many of these were similar in form to actual tools. And they looked dangerous. Oh, if only there were an agreed upon method of symbolizing value that's transferable, storable, and durable. Mm. Number 13. 
All hail the arrival of manufactured coins. Well, coins that are similar to the ones that we use today. The first instances of manufactured coins appear to have occurred separately in India, China, and various cities around the Aegean Sea somewhere between 700 and 500 BC. Differences in the manufacturing processes indicate that these coins were developed separately. Number 14. But when did paper money show up? Again, you can thank China for this. Thanks, China! As paper money was introduced there in the Song Dynasty during the 11th century. Number 15. This form of currency was based on the similar but not strictly official paper receipts used earlier on in 7th century China during the Tang Dynasty. This arose because, once again, people were sick of lugging around large amounts of coin when making large transactions. I'm starting to think that humans may have a tendency to not like inconvenience. Hmm. Number 16. Where did the word cash come from then, I hear you praying? Well, stop praying to me, it's weird, I'm a man, not a deity. But there are a number of possible sources. Some point to the Portuguese, who call their coins casha, but others have linked cash to the old French and Italian words casse and casa, meaning money box. Mi casa su casa, which ultimately derives from the Latin capsa, meaning box or chest or friendly ghost. Okay, maybe not the last one. Number 17. Most of the world's money is known as fiat money, which refers to money that is not backed up by gold or other precious metals. The term fiat comes from the Latin for let it be done, and essentially means money that is accepted simply because the government declares it to be money and everyone agrees that it is. It's a strangely flimsy system, actually. Number 18. Surprisingly, but also not surprisingly at all, the richest eight people in the world, including people like Warren Buffett and Mark Zuckerberg, possess as much money as the bottom 50% of the world's population. Number 19. There's a number of uber-wealthy hotspots throughout the world, and unsurprisingly, they tend to be in large, well-developed cities. Ultra-high net worth individuals, wonderfully abbreviated as ENWI, are people who have a net worth of at least $30 million. 4,000 such people live in London. I am not one of them. Number 20. Likewise, 740 Park Avenue, a residential building in Manhattan, is currently called home by the highest concentration of billionaires in the entirety of the United States. <sighs> Imagine the rent in that place. Number 21. In a direct and depressing comparison, between 1.5 and 2 million Americans live on less than $2 a day in personal income. This is not including welfare programs, which provide many people with much needed support, but still, I think we can all agree that poverty is bad. Ugh, look what you made me do. That being said, debt is also a huge problem in America. One depressing, if fascinating statistic, states that if you have no debts and $10 in your pocket, you are wealthier than a quarter of all Americans. Number 23. The UK's official unit of currency, the pound, was introduced all the way back in the 8th century during the reign of the Anglo-Saxon king, King Offa of Mercia, which makes the British pound the world's oldest currency that's still in use. Number 24. Something you probably haven't noticed since Queen Elizabeth II is literally our longest serving monarch ever is that the direction the reigning monarch faces on coins changes with each appointment. We'll probably never see it change though, because Queen Liz is going to live forever. God bless you, your match. Number 25. Bank of England banknotes, which are used in England and Wales, only go up to £50, with the Bank of England ceasing to use £100 notes in 1945. However, Scotland and Northern Ireland still have £100 notes to fill their baths with Scrooge McDuck style. Those lucky Scottish and Northern Irish so-and-sos. Number 26. But Scotland reigns supreme in the number of notes contest, as it's the only place in the UK to have a £1 note which is only issued by the Royal Bank of Scotland. Yes, we don't have one pound notes in England, so in strip clubs we just hurl coins. It's painful for the dancers, I, uh, um, I imagine. Someone told me once. I think, maybe, probably. Ah, uh, move on. Number, Number 27. 27. Remember a couple of facts ago when I said the Bank of England doesn't have banknotes larger than 50 pounds? Yeah, well, I lied, and I enjoyed doing it. The Bank of England does actually print notes called Giants, which are worth one million pounds and titans, which are worth 100 million pounds. These are created to maintain parity with Scottish and Northern Irish notes, and are only used in banks. As such, they are not in circulation, and it's a good thing, really. Imagine the change. Number 28. You think that's a stupid amount of money to have on a banknote? Oh, my sweet, poor, naive child. Due to the stupidly intense hyperinflation in Zimbabwe, the African nation ended up issuing notes worth a truly stupid 100 trillion Zimbabwean dollars. 
Which, by the way, is the equivalent of 40 cents. That's... that's just stupid. Number 29. Oh, you think we're done? The government of Hungary printed the highest denomination ever created in 1946. It printed a banknote worth 100 quintillion pengos. <laughs> pengos. 100 quintillion, by the way, looks like this. So yeah, that's just too many zeros. Number 30. In 1923, Germany's hyperinflation was so extreme that stacks of worthless German currency was given to children to play with, or even sometimes used as wallpaper. So chic. Imagine having a room in your house just decked out with money. Number 31. The most valuable coin ever produced was created by the Perth Mint. It's 80 centimeters wide, 12 centimeters deep, weighs over 1,000 kilograms, and is made from 99.99% pure gold. While its value as legal tender is 1 million Australian dollars, at the time it was created, its gold value was over 50 million Australian dollars. Number 32. Hilariously, more money for the board game Monopoly is printed each year than real money in the United States. About $30 billion worth of Monopoly money is printed each year, compared to the comparatively puny 972 million real dollars that the United States prints. This means that Monopoly prints 30 times more money than the US government. Number 33. The ATM, also known as a hole in the wall, was invented by Scottish inventor John Shepherd Barron, who came up with the idea when he was completely naked because he was having a bath. He eventually pitched the idea to Barclays while he was clothed, I imagine, and the machine they created was ultimately installed in London in 1967. Number 34. If you didn't know already, money is filthy, and not in a hot way. Studies have found there are more germs on a one pound coin than on a toilet seat, Ew. and that the average European banknote has over 26,000 bacteria on it. I should stop sucking on my foreign. Number 35. Even worse, or better depending on your outlook, other studies have shown that every banknote is contaminated with cocaine within a few weeks of circulation. Number 36. In an attempt to wreck the British economy during World War II, Nazi Germany began to produce large amounts of fake British banknotes. By 1943, 500,000 fake banknotes were being produced every month. At one point, a staggering 12% of British notes in circulation were evil Nazi fakes. The latest in our ongoing series of The Nazis Are bad. In response, the British government introduced the metal thread and stopped printing the higher value banknotes. Number 37. Nowadays, fake notes are far less common. In 2014, around 430,000 fake notes were removed from circulation, which altogether totaled around 8.1 million pounds. Thankfully, this is only a tiny percentage of the roughly 3 billion real banknotes in circulation in Britain. Number 38. The largest producer of counterfeit US currency is North Korea, which manages to produce fakes so convincing that they are sometimes referred to as super dollars. As of 2009, approximately $45 million worth of these fake North Korean banknotes have been identified, with even more likely still in circulation. Very often, these banknotes can only be detected with specialized equipment in the Federal Reserve. Number 39. Currently, the only woman other than Queen Madge to feature on English banknotes is Jane Austen, after Elizabeth Fry was replaced with Winston Churchill. Hashtag everyday sexism, all right, guys? Number 40. Even worse, Jane Austen's visage is accompanied by a quote from Pride and Prejudice of how meant to inspire an appreciation for reading. I declare, after all, there is no enjoyment like reading. That was Jane Austen there. Thanks for doing that, Jane. However, this line is spoken by the conceited Caroline Bingley, who has zero interest in books and only says it in an attempt to butter up Mr. Darcy, whom she would like as a husband, the harlot. Number 41. The legendary Native American Pocahontas was featured on a $20 note in the mid-19th century, making her the first woman to be depicted on a United States banknote. She was depicted kneeling before a priest, don't worry, it's not that weird, during her conversion to Christianity, surrounded by settlers and Native Americans. The meaning of life. The only portrait-style depiction of a real-life woman to ever be featured on American banknotes was Martha Washington, the wife of George what Washington. Other depictions of women have been included, such as allegories of liberty and justice, but they are not, in fact, real women. She was also the last woman to appear on US banknotes. Number 43. However, the first non-mythical historical woman to appear on any paper currency produced within the borders of what is now the United States was Lucy Holcomb Pickens. Known as the Queen of the Confederacy, Pickens was portrayed not on US bills, but on Confederate money between 1962 and 1864. Number 44. 
Officials in the Obama administration initially declared that Harriet Tubman, an African-American woman who escaped slavery and helped hundreds to do the same, would appear on the new $20. However, since Donald Trump was elected, that plan appears to be in question, with Treasury Secretary Steven Nuchin declining to commit to the change. So much for equality, guys. Thanks, Obama. Oh, no, wait. Thanks, Nuchin. Number 45. Queen Elizabeth II, oh, how I love her so, has never struggled to be represented on cold hard cash. The reigning British monarch has appeared on more coins and banknotes than any other person in history, having featured on the currencies of more than 30 different countries. Yay, colonialism. Number 46. The eagle depicted on American money actually has a name, and that name is Peter. Between 1830 and 1836, Peter was a regular visitor at Philadelphia's US Mint building, and was eventually adopted by the workers, who named him Peter the Mint Eagle and used him as a model for drawings. Sadly, he ultimately injured his arm in the coining process and died, but fret not, he was stuffed and is now on display at the same mint. God love ya, Pete. Number 47. A United States $100 bill costs just over 12 cents to print. <laughs> Remember fiat money? Yeah, that's it. Number 48. However, it costs more than a penny to make a penny. Huh? According to the US Mint, in 2016 it cost 1.5 cents to make a cent, up from 1.43 in 2015, but down from 2011 when pennies cost 2.41 cents to manufacture. Speaking of cents, that doesn't make any. hi -oh! Number 49. American pennies aren't just useful as a means of exchange though. Each one is uniformly minted at a diameter of 0.75 inches, or just under 2 centimeters. As such, if you line up 16 cents end to end, you have exactly one foot. Number 50. In 2015, the TSA collected $765,759.15 in loose change that people left at the airport security checkpoints across the United States. And guess what? They get to keep every cent. Number 51. Ever wondered how much ink the US Bureau of Engraving and Printing uses every day? No? Well, shut up, because I'm going to tell you anyway. The US Bureau of Engraving and Printing uses almost 9 tonnes of ink to print 26 million banknotes every single day. That works out to approximately $974 million worth of cold hard cash daily. Number 52. Both British and American paper money isn't actually paper at all. It's actually made out of fabric, with a blend of 75% cotton and 25% linen. Number 53. <laughs> Number 53. Except sometimes it isn't. On the 13th of September 2016, the Bank of England issued its first polymer banknotes, which are safer, stronger, and cleaner than paper notes, which, again, aren't actually paper. They're also much harder to counterfeit and more environmentally friendly, as the notes last 2.5 times longer than the other not paper notes. Number 54. But that's not the only thing that snazzy polymer notes can do. The edges of polymer banknotes are firm and sharp enough to fit into the grooves on vinyl records, creating sound just like a stylus needle. Yes, that's right, you can play vinyls with new fibers, which is possibly the coolest fact on this list, but please don't turn off. Number 55. However, the polymer notes are not universally loved due to one small part of their production process. Turns out the new plastic £5 notes contain beef tallow, a tiny amount of which is used in the production process. A total of 24 countries use the same supplier, and as such, some vegan shops refuse to take them. A petition was then started in protest, which now has over 137,000 signatures. Number 56. The American $10 bill has a lifespan of only four and a half years, whereas the $100 bill lasts for 15. As I mentioned before, polymer money, much more durable. Number 57. It takes about 4,000 double folds, which means first folding the note forward and then backward before an American banknote will tear. Number 58. However, vending machines will often refuse to accept limp, worn-out paper notes much sooner than that. One solution is to microwave them, which will crisp up cotton and linen banknotes enough to be accepted by vending machines. Then again, I don't really carry around a microwave everywhere. I should, though. Number 59. In recent years, rent and grocery bills in San Francisco have increased over 21% above the national average, all thanks to the so-called tech boom. But if you think that's extortionate and infuriating to think about, even if you don't live anywhere near San Francisco, then prepare yourself. Due to the effects of various gold rushes, the cost of a dozen eggs in 1850s America could set you back the equivalent of $90 in today's money. Equally, a pickaxe could cost the equivalent of $1,500, and hotel rooms could be more than $300,000 a month. Number 60. 
Cheques are often used in place of money, but in reality, cheques are simply instructions to a bank. And so technically, it can be written on anything. As such, in the old past, people have written cheques on stone slabs, bananas, and cows. Mooney. <laughs> oh, Mooney. Number 61. Hotels were the first thing to offer something similar to credit cards in the 1920s, as a way for customers to pay for their hotel stays. Not long afterwards, department stores and even gas companies began offering their own cards. However, they could only be used at the businesses that issued them. In 1951, some banks began offering credit cards that could be used at a number of different places, with the first credit card being issued in the UK by Barclays in 1966. Number 62. Only 8% of the world's money is actually physical. The rest is digital money that exists only on computers. No wonder it's so easy for hackers to steal so much money from people and oh my god, someone should do a video all about hacking, shouldn't they? <laughs> oh wait, I've done it. Watch it after this one. Number 63. The term buck, as slang for an American dollar, arrived before the use of paper money was particularly widespread, when people would use animal skins as money. These included the pelts of beavers, but also deer and elk, the males of which are called bucks. Interesting. Gross, but interesting. It also implies that Starbucks has deer in its coffee. Ooh. Nintendo 64. The origin of the slang for the British pound, the quid, is less certain, but the most widely accepted theory posits that the term derives from the Latin phrase quid pro quo, which essentially means this for that, or something for something. The first recorded use of quid as slang for money is in the book Strange News from Bartholomew Fair, by P. Arriton, written in 1661. It included the line, The fool lost his purse, but how he knew not, for the reckoning being so daily brought in, his quids were vanished. Number 65. Apparently, the best way to make money is to gamble it. Well, if you own the casino, anyway. Gambling generates more revenue each year than movies, theme parks, spectator sports, cruise ships, and music combined, raking in an incredible $34.6 billion. Number 66. Infamous drug lord Pablo Escobar had so much physical cash in his possession that he lost a remarkable $1 billion a year to rats. Since he couldn't keep his money in a natural bank, being an infamous drug lord and all that, Escobar kept huge piles of cash in warehouses, which would then be feasted on by rats with very expensive taste. Since we're talking about the old Pablo guy, I should probably also mention that his goons would spend over $2,500 a month on rubber bands alone to hold the rolls of cash. Number 67. According to a recent study carried out by the American Institute of CPAs, the average monthly allowance for American children is around $65 every month. That works out to about £50 a month for us British folk, which, um, I did not get that much. God, everything's bigger in America. Number 68. In 2012, Americans spent $51 billion on their pets, with $310 million of that specifically going towards the purchase of, wait for it, pet costumes. Number 69. Money, money, money. In fact, Americans spend a lot of money on a lot of things. Around $11 billion is spent on coffee, which no doubt led them to also spend $1.4 billion on overly counter teeth whiteners. Americans also spent $2.3 billion on tattoos, but only a paltry $66 million on tattoo removal. No regrets. Number 70. The number 13 features prominently on the American $1 bill. There are 13 stars above P.T. the Eagle, as well as 13 steps on the pyramid and 13 vertical bars on the shield. P.T. Boy is holding 13 leaves and 13 berries on the olive branch in one talon and 13 arrows in the other. These are all references to the original 13 states of the USA. Number 71. Funnily enough, the US Bureau of Engraving and Printing will actually sell you $10,000 for only $45, which you can easily purchase on their website. The only problem is that the banknotes are shredded, ending your no doubt foolproof plan to scam the American government out of thousands of dollars. Number 72. There is a farm in the teeny tiny American state of Delaware that mulches worn out US banknotes and turns it into compost. They can get through over four tons of cash in a single day. Number 73. The motto featured on the first official US one cent coin was not the admirable E Pluribus Unum, or even the more religious In God We Trust. In fact, the first one cent coin featured three statements Fugio, which is Latin for I fly or I flee, We are one, which is similar to E Pluribus Unum, and thirdly, <clears throat> Mind your own business. That's rude. I like it. Number 74. British coins can be arranged on a flat surface to reveal the shape of a totally rad shield, the same as the coat of arms on the one pound coin. 
The new coins that possess this cool nifty little feature were created by designer Matthew Dent in 2008. Number 75. Not to be outdone, Canada has a coin with a glow-in-the-dark dinosaur on it. Have I said that before? Like, twice before, maybe in two other one on one videos like these ones? Hmm. Number 76. Not to be outdone either, the Polynesian island of Niue has some of the weirdest usable coins, which feature depictions of characters from Star Wars, Pokemon, Doctor Who, and even Disney's Frozen. Number 77. The world's total debt, which is the amount owed by every person, organization, and nation on the planet, exceeded $199 trillion in 2016, despite the fact that the world has only $80.9 trillion in its cash and bank deposits. Um, guys? I think we might have been ripped off here. Number 78. Uzbekistan's Tian is the least valuable coin in existence, at around 2,400 times less than the American one cent coin, and 3,000 times less valuable than a single British penny. Number 79. In Old English, the word pig was a type of clay that was often used to make containers that held money. The word similarity to the name of the farmyard animal led to potters making these pots in the shape of pigs. And the rest is pink curly-tailed oinky history. Number 80. There are more than 1.6 million ATMs in the world. There's even a couple in Antarctica, which are owned and operated by Wells Fargo meaning it only dispenses American money to the inhabitants of McMurdo Station, a US research base established in 1956. Number 81. The country closest to going completely cashless is Belgium, with 93% of all consumer transactions being carried out without cash. Number 82. The lovely, beautiful, gorgeous, and dare I say it, pretty nation of England holds the record for executing counterfeiters. Oh. In the year 1817, we hanged 313 people for making or knowingly using fake banknotes. Number 83. Funnily enough, the US Secret Service was actually created in 1865 to stop counterfeiting, which was a huge problem during the American Civil War. By the end of the conflict, as much as half of all US paper currency in circulation was fake. Number 84. The Office of Currency will replace your damaged money if you present 51% of the banknote. Each year, the US Treasury deals with approximately 30,000 claims and redeems over $30 million of mutilated currency. Number 85. Flowing hair dollar was the first dollar coin minted by the United States federal government. In 2013, a specimen dating back to 1794 was sold for $10,016,875, which is the highest price ever paid for a coin. Suck it, Perth Mint. Number 86. As you're probably aware, British coins are marked with the date they were produced, but mistakes do happen. In 2009, hundreds of thousands of 20p coins were created without the dates, and over 200,000 of them went into circulation. A number of them have turned up on online auction sites for much, much more than just 20 pence. Number 87. In the UK, shopkeepers are legally allowed to refuse to accept payment if it comes in the form of a load of coins. They can refuse payments of more than 20p in 1p and 2p coins, more than £5 in 5p and 10p coins, and more than £10 in 20p and 50p coins. Number 88. Studies have found that Americans have more fantasies about money than they do about sex. To be fair, that's kind of understandable. You can have sex without money. In fact, I always do. Number 89. Men are more likely to suffer from erectile dysfunction and anxiety if his partner makes more money than he does, and is also more likely to cheat on them as a result. Number 90. This could be due to the fact that some studies, which may or may not be 100% reliable, show that women enjoy sex more with richer partners. Or they're just saying that for that dollar dollar bills. Number 91. A man from California, known as Walter Kavanagh, has a collection of more than almost 1,500 valid credit cards recognized by the Guinness World Record as the largest in the world, leading him to be called Mr. Plastic Fantastic. Number 90, do. The study or collection of money is known as numismatics, which comes from the Greek word nomisma, meaning coins in usage. If only I was numismatic, then I'd actually have some savings. Number 93. The chances of winning the national lottery in the United Kingdom currently sit at 1 in 45 million, which is roughly the chance of being hit by lightning. So you never know, it could happen both in the same day. Maybe. At least the lottery would pay for the surgery. Number 94. During the 2012 Olympics, coins were minted that explained the offside rule in football. Useful, I guess? Kind of? I mean, who reads coins except me for this video? Number 95. 
In the United Kingdom, a full judicial trial is held to test newly minted coins, ominously called the Trial of the Picks. While this ceremony is carried out to ensure new coins meet the required standards, in practice, modern production methods mean it's unlikely new coins would not be accepted. That being said, the ceremony, which dates back to the 12th century, is a trial in a very real sense, presided over by a judge, an expert jury of metallurgical assayers. Which sounds like the name of a metal band. Number 96. According to the world's most famous author of books about specky wizards with ginger best friends, J.K. Rowling, the exchange rate between wizarding and muggle money is roughly five pounds for every galleon. This would make sickles the equivalent of 30 pence, and it would make a nut just over one pence in value. Number 97. Between the 8th century to the 13th century, the silver penny was often the only coin in circulation. During this period, it wasn't uncommon to cut pennies into halves and quarters to provide smaller amounts. A quarter was originally known as a forthing, which over time changed into a farthing, which was used for hundreds of years between 1216 and 1956. Number 98. Despite claims to the contrary, it's actually not illegal to burn or damage British money, as long as you completely destroy it. Simply defacing money is an offence under the Currency and Banknotes Act of 1928. Number 99. Funnily enough, if you have a very low threshold of fun, 1p and 2p coins, commonly known as coppers, are not actually made of copper. But some coins that are not known as coppers are made of copper. You following me so far? Since 1922, 1p and 2p coins have been made of steel and merely plated with copper. Whereas every coin worth more than 10p is actually made of copper. Number 100. The most expensive object ever built is the International Space Station, costing approximately $150 billion to build. Was it worth it though? Does it have a jacuzzi? I don't think so. Number 101! The African Union plans to institute a continent-wide single currency, similar to the Euro, by 2028. This hypothetical currency is commonly referred to as the Afro. Meaning, technically, you could pay for things with afros. Well, not with the hairdo. Although, actually, afros are so cool, you should be able to pay with them anyway, in my opinion. Anyway, what does my opinion mean? I'll tell you what it does mean, though. It means telling you to watch these videos coming up next in the Zen board, because they're great. Bye!